Hi, I'm Michelle Shea Walker, and you're listening to Modern Day Magic Makers, a podcast dedicated to rebranding magic from the mystical fantasy world of your childhood to a more modern incarnation where spells and rituals take on many forms, and magic makers include people of all walks of life just looking to shift the energy in the world. Tune in for inspiring interviews, recommended rituals, and magic making mentors of past, present, and fiction. Stay tuned for some modern day magic. All right, everybody, welcome back to Modern Day Magic Makers, the podcast. I'm here today with my friend Nick Conrad of the Green Suites. Hello. And I'm super excited to have him here to talk about some of the projects. As I've said before, Modern Day Magic Makers is all about introducing the world to people that are doing something to shift the energy. It doesn't necessarily have to be traditional, magical, witchy type stuff. It can be anything that's kind of moving in a different direction, moving things in a new light. Uh, And Nick, I feel like fits that perfect description. Uh, So Nick, how about you start by telling us a little bit about your business, The Green Suite. What what do you do? Yeah, uh, thanks Michelle for having me. Um, So The Green Suite is a small business, um, very small. It's just me for the most part. Uh, Michelle helps me out with a lot of things as well. Um, But the essence of my company is, like I said, it's called the Green Suite, so we're all about sustainability. Uh, it's my goal to basically help save the world by showing people how they can be more sustainable. And I do that with um, a interactive series of classes in fields like hydroponic window farming, so I teach people how to grow vegetables in their window hydroponically. Also a, a DIY solar electricity class, where I teach people how to make their own solar panels and provide their own electricity. Uh, and of course, I have a very famous uh, zombie survival course, um, which is very, very fun. And it may sound like it's about smashing zombie brains, but it's really about surviving in any disaster, even a zombie apocalypse. But the thing I love about particularly the zombie survival class, Nick is a very big inspiration for my own business in this way. Um, they always say to like follow your bliss and, and do what you enjoy and the money will follow. And, and we all think, oh, wow, that's great, but um, I need to make money. And so <laughs> most of us don't do that. But that's kind of how the zombie survival class came about, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was, um, we've talked that like you, you've been around since the beginning. So it was one of those ideas like, I like zombies. They're pretty cool. Uh, what if I just as a joke did a zombie survival course maybe once or twice and see if a couple people show up it might be fun we'll hang out at a bar you know it'll be fun and that was like three years ago mm-hmm. so I did my first class on December 21st um, 2012 which mm-hmm. end of the world didn't happen yes, that's true thankfully that's why, do you remember that, that yeah that's why yeah. you picked that date that was the first like, date that's not like Halloween why were we doing it in December no, it was but, December yeah. 21st like, the end of the Mayan calendar so <laughs> I thought it would be a really good date if, the, if we were gonna end of the world yeah. we should pre- prepare we should so. prepare for those zombies that are coming to get us yeah, yeah. so that yeah that was the beginning of, of that and then um, other than the the class I do lots of other stuff too. I do um, a lot of presentations that aren't necessarily a class. I, I've done a lot of uh, stuff like that. Also make glassware from recycled materials. So I feel that I firsthand have saved quite a few materials from the landfill. And it's only a fraction of what we produce, but yeah. you know, it's it's the things that I can do. So um, it's 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 been an amazing adventure. Yeah, because you you salvage a lot of your products, right? Yeah, almost everything that I sell um, is saved from the trash so uh in a way you might think that i sell trash to people but <laughs> but it's not trash it's, it's but like no it's repurposing and that's exactly. something that we need to definitely grow and 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 do more as a culture um but the thing oh this is actually a good little segue so i, I teach a class on on manifesting manifestation friday night uh and nick though he is not uh, using the vernacular that often is a really powerful manifester. Um, so do you have any fun? Cause I know a lot of your stuff that you use for your project is reclaimed and, and discovered. And I know from knowing you that most of it is just like, you think that you need something, you walk out your back door and it's there. Oh yeah. So that you happens have all the time. Stories like that about, about manifesting supplies for your project. For sure. Um, yeah. so I did a big festival called Green Fest, and it was all about sustainability, and they had all kinds of amazing vendors there, and I decided I want to be one of them. And so in order to present, I told myself I needed a few things. I needed a bunch of big poster boards so I can do some print-ups. Uh, I needed an easel, and it had to be collapsible, and it had to be in good shape. Uh, and I needed 
a couple other materials like that related. And I found all of those things on different occasions in, in my alley. Perfect, nothing wrong with them, ready to go. And it was exactly what I needed when I needed it. And it was just by thinking it. Like, I really need this. And yeah. it just shows up. So I, I think first you have to decide what you need mm -hmm. and what you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, not not to say it's going to happen to everybody, but if I think if as long as you're keeping it positive, I think it will show up for you. Yeah. That is actually step one that I teach in my classes, that you need to, you need to know what you want. You yep. need to be able to define it. Because if you don't know what you want, how are you going to ask the universe for yeah. it? Yeah, or you're going to be able to call in some really weird stuff. Yeah. Like if you're like, oh, I need something to display some things for this thing that I'm doing, you could have walked out and found some pretty crappy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, need, I need exactly yeah. this, and yeah. it showed up for me. And yeah. and that kind of shit happens to me all the time. Like I... Yeah. there's all, it's all kind, kind of annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty great, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's stuff like, it's like, I really need this, and it shows up. So yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. And a lot of the gigs that I've done over the last couple of years... Uh, like 90% of them people have called me up and they're like hey we really want you to come to us and do do this thing it's so it's it's been it's been great I'm very happy yeah and it's all about just opening up your energy to the new opportunities and and you know allowing it to come to you awesome so tell us about your most recent project. What are you currently working on? I'm currently working on a project called the Green Van Project. And what that is, is it's kind of the next step for my business. I've done a lot of work in Chicago and it's been amazing. And I get people that want to hire me out in other cities and other states. And it's just not cost effective to fly out to do one event for a couple hundred bucks and then try to fly back. It would, there would be no profit there. Um, so I've even considered doing that just to do it, just for exposure. But then I had an epiphany that um, it, it actually started with a dream for me. Is I, I had this dream, it was very random and didn't really make sense at the time, and I kind of pieced it together much later. But the dream was that I woke up in a place I didn't really know where I was. And it, it, I was at home, so it felt like it was a place that I had lived. And um, it was obvious that it was like a very, very small space. I kind of, later on, I kind of pieced together that it must have been like a tiny house kind of thing. Um, and then there was, I remember there was a, a sliding door that was open and there was like a really cool mountain view kind of scene. Uh, and in the dream, I asked myself, where do you want to go today? And to me, that was a really powerful moment. And then I kind of woke up from the dream and thought, wow, that, that's really cool. I want to do that. But it didn't really come together for me until a few months later, people were posting about other people that live in vans and uh, Van Dog Traveler being one of them, one of my major inspirations. And uh, these people have taken these different types of vans and they've completely taken out everything from the interior and turned them into mobile tiny houses. And it was at that point that I said, man, that would be freaking awesome. That's what I want to do. So I decided to start the Green Van Project, which is exactly that. It's going to be a um, Dodge Sprinter and I'm going to clean everything out of the inside and then turn it into a tiny house. So it's going to be complete with uh, its own um, electric system provided by solar panels. It's going to have uh, hot and cold running water. It's going to have like a kitchen area. It's going to have a bathroom, a sink, living quarters. It probably, um, I'm hoping it'll sleep up to four people with a like a collapsible, expandable configuration. And uh, it's going to have a rooftop deck. Uh, it's going to have like a like a little patio area on the side of it if necessary. So um, yeah, that's that's going to be my next my next big project. And it, everything's going to be sustainable, of course, and it's going to allow me the capacity to drive all over the U.S. teaching my classes. So mm -hmm. it's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. And that's super powerful to have a dream and have it all kind of start to fall into place like that. Um, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of that story. I love that you... You dreamed it up because um, I know when we met you you talked about how you had sort of like intuitions and and could tap into that side of things where you could kind of maybe not necessarily see the future but like have a little inkling of like what's to come and, and I think that that dream is definitely a, a big sign of what's to come for you I've always had glimpses into the future I, yeah. I, I think the future is very malleable too. like nothing definitely. is set in stone yeah like you have an idea of something and it's not exactly what you maybe had planned but it, it kind of gives you an idea of one possibility in life yeah. and I think some people can tap into those visions more easily than others and I guess I've been lucky in that regard that I've always kind of had little 
glimpses of the future and yeah. I've kind of tried to lead myself towards that. And sometimes these glimpses into the future have let me realize that I was not on the path that I wanted to be on. That's powerful. It's yeah. like, I don't want to be yeah. a 75 year old waiter. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm, I, I'm a big believer that that's that when we look into like fortune telling and tarot and all these divina divination practices, I feel like they're just a really great way to show you if you continue on this current path, this is where you're headed. And, and again, nothing's ever set in stone. Um, and I know a lot of your intuition probably comes from the fact that you're a Pisces, and I'm pretty sure you're a Pisces with a Pisces moon and a Pisces rising sign. Um, but other than that, do you feel like you've done anything in your past to kind of open up to that sort of energy or do you feel like you're there's something about the way you view the world that just allows you to kind of be more open to that I think upbringing is a part of it that you know even my parents were like oh yeah you know energy's real like that that kind mm -hmm. of thing like um I think you can you can kind of they believed that you know there's power to to human energy I think yeah. that's a part of it too and I think just personally being open to it of course like if yeah. if you don't believe in something it's not going to happen for you yeah if you believe in something it's more likely to happen so to if you. you're sitting down in like a meditation or like going to sleep like okay come on prove it to me that this can be a thing like that's not an energy to to be open to yeah is it something that usually comes to you in sort of random spurts or is it something that you kind of intentionally try and, and bring about it just comes to me. I, I don't yeah. think I don't think it's anything you can force. Okay. Um, I, I think that that's not really the right way. Like you were talking about earlier, like mm -hmm. prove me wrong. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I don't think that's that's not the right mindset. Yeah. I think our minds are extremely powerful, and our, our subconscious has a lot more to us yeah. than than we realize. So I think to to force your subconscious to your will, that's not how it works. Yeah. And I don't think that's the world the way the universe works. You can't, you know smash and bend and force everything into exactly the cookie cutter mold that you have in your mind. So I think that you just have to be open to all possibilities. Yes. And I think that you should, in a way, take the card that you've been given and try to do the best with, with what you can. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, on the other flip side, like you can make things happen by yeah. trying and, and by, by putting yourself out there. So I think that there shouldn't be like a, like a definitive black and white explanation on, on things yeah. like that yeah and I think a lot of it helps that you have just a natural sort of more easygoing energy um so I think that that allows you to be more open to that stuff too that's a big thing too that yeah. I'm just kind of like oh whatever like eh, you know eh. lesson for everyone just be like oh whatever and you'll get all kinds of cool stuff happening too <laughs> maybe I don't know well, I think it's a big my attitude's always been like you are the first one to say that I was very zen but I I guess it's true I'm just kind of like eh, you know like and yeah. I've always had like a laissez-faire kind of, uh, you know, view on life that a lot of people, my dad is a good example of a type A personality. Like he will try to like force things in to like make them happen and doesn't always work out that way. Yeah. And then even the plan when it works perfectly, that's not the right outcome. Yeah. So I think just kind of like going with the flow is a big part of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to be like super lazy and be like, I'm not going to yeah. do anything. I'm just going to let the yeah. world take taking, care of me. And it's all about taking inspired action rather than trying to force something to happen in a certain way. Folks, if you're listening to the audio, we have a cat that just went crazy in the room. It's so crazy that's time. what the random noises are. <laughs> um, but the, uh, yeah, going with the flow and allowing and, and having that place of, I'm going to take action that feels very inspirational to me, the zombie survival class being a good example of that and just see where it carries me um and you know if it doesn't do something awesome i got to do something that i was inspired by and if it does great you know so. and that's that's been something that i've been looking ahead with the whole green band project yeah. uh, because no matter what happens if this ends up not being as successful as i hope um i still get to build a really cool van that's yeah. definitely going to happen and other than that, I still get to travel the country, and that's something I've always wanted to do. So whether or not this is a sound business move, if I end up making money, if I end up going in debt trying to do this, I don't care. It's still an experience I still, that you're going to want to have. If someone told me tomorrow, hey, Nick, you're not going to make any money on this project. In fact, you're going to end up owing money. I'd still do it. Yeah. I would still do it because it sounds like fun. Yeah. It sounds like a really I cool agree. adventure. I think most of America would agree with you, like... It's, it's, it's something, you know, the wanderlust is within us all, so. And I've been a little leery about being a guy who lives in a van down by the river. 
because that is exactly what I'm going to be. And it, it has its pros and cons to it too, but I think the pros far outweigh the cons. Yeah. So what's, what's in the future? Uh, as far as like after this project's done, like what's next or not necessarily next, but what's your ultimate goal for the green the green suite in your business? Uh, ultimately, um, after the green van project, I, I foresee that happening for maybe six months or a year, maybe a little longer, but that's kind of the the duration of of that. And after that, um, I'm kind of I've always been thinking about uh, tiny houses have been really cool, but what if I build a tiny house complex, mm-hmm. uh, maybe a couple of units together in the same building made out of shipping containers that kind of thing that would be really cool that i think that would be a logical step after the green van project save mm-hmm. up some money build a building and then it's always been a dream of mine to own my own building mm-hmm. and it's really expensive to buy a building especially in chicago but if i'm able to build it out of mostly recycled materials that's cutting a huge chunk of the cost out yeah. uh, and then it will of course would be off grid so i'd save a lot of money there so um, I think that's that's a ni- nice thing, but ultimately, I've always wanted to basically be like a, like the leader of a cult, essentially, um, but like a cult for the environment. I think is is it there? You go like an environmentalist yeah. cult, you know. <laughs> so instead of like you know killing cats or something, yeah. we like care about the environment, you know. Like we're like we're not trying to hurt things; we're trying to like yeah. save things. So yeah. I think it'd be really cool to have like uh, our little environmentalist cult. Uh, take up a few buildings in like a a certain area of a city so ultimately I would like to have a little eco village I think it'd be really cool Mm -hmm. to have a group of people living in close proximity to each other with all like views that are artists and artisans and people that care about the environment more than than regular people I think yeah more than the average show and I think that would be that'd be really cool that would be really cool and a really great way to find a sense of community too Exactly. And yeah. there's a lot of people that, that are super environmentalist mm-hmm. that are like, man, it'd be really cool to live near other people, yeah. but they still, maybe they don't want to live at the earth ships in, yeah. in New Mexico, very far off grid and kind of yeah. in the middle of nowhere. Um, they want that happy medium. So they kind of, they wouldn't mind being in the city, but they would still want to be environmentalist. So I think that's, that's my niche that I, I would like to build mm-hmm. near the city, not necessarily downtown-ish, mm-hmm. but I think it can be done. I really do. Even in Chicago, cause people have always said that like, oh, Chicago is expensive, but there's lots of lots, even in Chicago, that are unoccupied, yeah. that aren't crazy expensive. And if I stack a few shipping containers on top of each other, make a nice little building, I think it can be done relatively inexpensively. So who knows? In a few years, you could be living in one of the, the green suites, eco-friendly communities. I guess I won't call it an eco-cult. I don't know if that's really going <laughs> to... It's not going to really sell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eco Oasis, maybe. Eco Oasis, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but in the meantime, if you would like to support Nick and his project um, for the Green Van Project, there is an Indiegogo campaign going on right now, and and until Halloween, maybe a few days after, but definitely until Halloween, you can go to indiegogo.com backslash projects backslash the Green Van Project with hyphens between each of the words. We'll put a link below. You can also go to Nick's website, greenyoursuite.com, S-U-I-T-E, as Sweet. in your home where you live, Green Your Suite. Um, there's also information for the fun ca- funding campaign there, and you can sign up for Nick's next zombie survival class, which is coming up on October 28th, Yes, right? 28th, so 7 o'clock. a Halloween activity. It's a great date night. You can go. Yep. Figure out how compatible your survival skills are with your date, and maybe have a little zombie survival skills to take with you into Halloween. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Nick. I appreciate you coming and sharing your stories, and best of luck with your Green Band project. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Great to be here, and um, I want to thank Michelle for being awesome. (laughs) And thanks for having me. Thanks. (laughs) All right, Modern Day Magic Makers, we'll see you again next time. Have a great, lovely, magical evening. Oh, happy Back to the Future Day. Yeah, and we are recording this on Back to the Future Day, so happy October 21st, 2015. That's it for today's show. For more on Nick, once again, head over to greenyoursuite.com. To learn more about me, head over to michelleshaywalker.com, and if you like this episode, subscribe, share, or leave us a review. Until next time... Keep on making your own brand of modern day magic.